Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. The universe was created 13.7 billion years ago. The whole universe, whatever we are seeing today or whatever we are aspiring to know about, it has been created 13.7 billion years ago through a concept called as the Big Bang Theory. So this Big Bang Theory has led to the creation of various solar systems among numerous solar systems our own solar system is the one. So within this solar system, the, our planets have been created 4.6 billion years ago. Since the beginning of the, or the origin of the earth, earth has seen various developmental phases. So the, being the fireball, being the burning fireball, now it has become the solidified mass. So from being the f burning ball to the solidified, ma solidified mass, there are various phases so these phases have been led to the present shape. So this shape is because of the concepts called as the tectonic movements. So these tectonic movements have created various landscapes on the surface of the earth. So whatever we are seeing, the scenic beauty of the planet earth, that is all because of the tectonic movements. So one of the result of these tectonic movements is the volcanism or the volcanic activity. So recently, so in Japan, there was an eruption of the volcano called as the Sakurajima volcano. So because of this volcanic eruption, so there has been a context or there is a context for discussing this topic. Okay. So we are going to discuss about the Sakurajima volcano in today's class. So before going into the details about the Sakurajima volcano, let us know about the volcanoes in the world okay the volcanoes have been spewing lava ash and the gas since the earth was formed billions of years ago that means 4.6 billion years ago earth was formed since the formation of the earth these volcanoes have been spewing or they have been erupting the lava ash and other gases okay so they have created over 80 percent of the world's surface layer yes so now the earth has been composed of the oceans and the continents okay this landmass 80 percent of this whole landmass is because of the result of the volcanism so these volcanoes volcanoes have sculpted the mountains the craters and they have produced the fertile environment environment for life to flourish yes so if you look into this lava ash and other gases these ashes and the lava they are rich in the <coughs> mineral resources okay so when the lava is solidified when the solidified rock is weathered okay this weathered rock will lead to the formation of the soil this soil will be very rich in the nutrients like the potassium or the phosphorus or the such other uh, nutrients which are, which are required for the crop plants so in that way it will create the very fertile environment for the life to flourish okay then these volcanoes are found on the every continent there is no exception okay with respect to all the continents on all the continents we can find the volcanoes okay and these are the there are around 1500 potentially active volcano okay there are lakhs of volcanoes on the surface of the earth but there are different volcanoes dormant volcanoes active volcanoes right so with respect to the active volcanoes there are 1500 potentially active volcanoes on the earth okay 10 percent of these active volcanoes are found in the japan itself okay there are around 111 active volcanoes in japan okay so for our study these 1500 potentially active volcanoes are important and among these 1500 111 japanese active volcanoes are very important so whatever we are discussing today that volcano is the active volcano is uh, present in the japan now before going into again the details about the sakurajima volcano so I would like to highlight some of the important volcanoes in the world, okay. Mount Fuji in Japan, Mauna Loa and the Mauna Kea or it is also called as the Kila Yua in the Hawaiian island of the United States, Mount Etna in the Italy, Pico di Fogo in the Cape Verde, Mount Vesuvius in Italy, Stromboli in again in Sicily belongs to the Italy itself, then Cotopaxi in the Ecuador, Mount Mayan and the Mount Krakatoa. These are the very very important and active volcanoes in the world. Okay, and these have created lot of disasters whenever they have 
erupted in the past okay so these are very important and the major volcanoes in the world now let us come to the actual discussion of today's class that is the sakurajima volcano this is an active strato volcano this is this is an active volcano that means it is erupting on a very uh, regular basis that means the frequency between the different eruptions is very less okay once in a century this uh, volcano has been erect, uh, erecting so because of that it is called as the active volcano okay so it is a strato volcano that means strata means layers okay strato volcano or it is also called as the composite volcano so formerly it is an island it was an island sakurajima was an island okay and now it is a peninsula being the island now it has been converted into the peninsula in a kagoshima prefecture in the kyushu island of the japan okay so this volcano is located in the kyushu island there are four major islands in the japan country okay hokkaido honshu shikoku kyushu these are the four important islands so this kyushu is the southernmost island in the japanese uh, country okay so in this kyushu island this sakurajima volcano is located once upon a time it was an it was also an uh, island now it has become a peninsula okay so the lava flows of the 1914 eruption connected it with the osumi peninsula there is a peninsula called as the osumi peninsula in the kyushu island okay so when the lava or when the volcano erupted in the sakurajima island this erupted lava flowed continuously for long duration of time okay this has created the volcanic surface or the solidified surface of the lava this solid surface became connected with the osumi peninsula now it is now connected with the osumi peninsula okay now it is no more uh, island this is the most active volcano in the japan yes there are various uh, famous volcanoes in the japan called like the mount fuji mount aso and most uh, mount zao there are various mountains which are active uh, known for active volcanoes but among all the famous volcanoes in the japan this is the most active this is not the largest one but this is the most active that means its uh, frequency of eruption is more okay so in that way it is a most active volcano in the japan so this was recently erupted in july month itself on 24th july 2022 this volcano was erupted okay so it was looking like this this is a huge cloud of ashes okay now the location of this uh, island okay or this sakurajima volcano is the southernmost island of the japan this is the hokkaido honshu this is shikoku and this is kyushu island okay F within this kyushu island this sakurajima volcano was erupted okay now let us go further detail into this this is the kyushu island within this kyushu island this is the kagoshima uh, port okay or it was one of the prefectures in the japan so now sakurajima volcano was erupted in this region so now because of the continuous eruption of the sakurajima this island is connected with the rest of the mainland okay now it has become the part of the peninsula okay again th there is a detailed map once upon a time this whole region was the island okay sakurajima island because of the continuous eruption of the lava the lava flowed in all the directions okay in this direction there was a land now the lava connected with the peninsula this is osumi peninsula okay now osumi peninsula has been connected with the uh, sakurajima uh, island now this there is no because this island is now connected with the mainland no more it can be called as the island okay now this is the part of osumi peninsula sakurajima peninsula or or this part is the part of osumi peninsula now okay this is how the sakurajima island was converted into the part of peninsula now the volcanic activity still continues so this sakurajima island, uh, volcano before it was erupted in the 1914 since 1914 it is continuously erupting and this activity is still continuing dropping volcanic ash on the surroundings yes in 2016 from 1914 in 2016 again a team of experts sorry so there was a study by the different scientists from different universities especially the 
Bristol University of the United Kingdom and the Sakurajima Volcano Research Center in the Japan. The scientists from these two institutions, they studied and they predicted something. In 2016, they suggested that the volcano could have a major eruption within 30 years. Okay. In 2016, they said that, so within 30 years, uh, that means by 2046, there would be two eruptions. Okay. There would be major eruption of the Sakurajima volcano but before six years end of itself there are now more two eruptions have been already occurred okay that means they the scientists said that within next 30 years that means by 2046 there will be major eruption of the sakurajima volcano so within the end of six years there have been already two eruptions occurred in this zone okay so that means it indicates that the, this is the most frequent most active volcano in the Japan. Okay, let us look into the 1914 eruption. What happened in the 1914? The 1914 eruption was the most powerful in the 20th century Japan. Okay, because in 1914 it had created a lot of devastation with respect to the property and the life of the people. Okay, so in that way it is the most powerful 20th century volcano in the Japan. This had been dormant for over a century until 1914. That means in 1800s it was erupted. Till from 1800 onwards till the 1914 there were no eruptions. But all of a sudden after 100 years this was erupted in the year 1914. So again it became the active volcano. Okay. The lava flows filled the narrow strait between the island and the mainland turning it into a peninsula. Yes, we have seen this diagram in the previous slide. Okay. So, because of the continuous eruption of the lava, this island now it is connected into the, connected into the Osumi Peninsula. Okay. The lava flows are rare in Japan. Actually, this Japan is located in the Pacific Ring of Fire. In this Japan island, the lava flow is very low because of the high content of the silica. So the silica increases the viscosity of the liquid. Okay, if the silica content is more, the flowing ability of the liquid will be less. Okay, that means the viscosity will be more. The liquid will lose its flowing capacity. So because of the silica content of the magma in the Japanese volcanoes, the lava flow is very rare in the Japan. Okay. But as an exception to this rule, the Sakurajima continued for months. The lava eruption in the Sakurajima volcano continued for months. Okay, So this was an exception. The, that means in the Sakurajima volcano, the lava flow is more. That means viscosity is less or the silica content is less in the Sakurajima uh, lava. So, the island grew engulfing several smaller islands nearby and eventually became the connected to the mainland by narrow isthmus. Okay. There is a term called isthmus. Okay. Isthmus and the straits. So, these are the different terms. This isthmus is the narrow channel of land or narrow stretch of land or the narrow strip of the land. Okay. This isthmus related to the land. Okay. The land which joins or the narrow strip of the land which joins the two bigger land masses is called as the isthmus. For example, Panama isthmus is there. Panama isthmus, it connects it connects the North America with the South America. Okay, that is the isthmus. There is one more term called as the strait. This is related to the water body. This is the small water body which joins the bigger water bodies. Okay, this isthmus connects the two land masses, but it separates the water bodies. But the strait, it connects it connects the water bodies, but separates the land masses. Okay, for example, Strait of Hormuz. Okay, this strait of Hormuz separates the two water bodies, sorry, separates two land masses but joins the two water bodies. Okay, this is the isthmus and the strait concept. Okay, so because of the continuous lava eruption in the Sakurajima uh, volcano, it has created the isthmus. This isthmus is now connected with the Osuma Peninsula, okay, in the Kyushu island of Japan. Now, what is the recent activity in the Sakurajima 
volcano. Sakurajima's activity became more prominent in 1955. Okay, so it erupted after 1914. Again, it was erupted in the year 1955. From 1955 onwards, there is a continuous, almost on every year basis, there are continuous eruptions. But the major ones are very recently in 2012, 13, 19, and 2020, 22. Okay, these are the most very very recent eruptions of this uh, volcano. The thousands of small explosions happen each year. See, that means on an everyday basis, three to four times this volcano will erupt. Okay, so thousands of small uh, explosions will happen in this volcano. But the most recent one is the July 24, 2022. Okay, so following this eruption on the July 24, 2022, the Japan Meteorological Agency raised the eruption alert level from level three to level five. Okay, so that means level 3, see on July 24, the eruption was more, it was huge and it, there was a threat for the life and the property of the people and the authorities in the Japan, they have took the precautionary measure and they have evacuated the people from that dangerous zone. But immediately, the meteorological agency of the Japan, it, it issued a one alert which has the level 5, that means it is the highest level of alert for the citizens of the country in that Japan. Okay. So this was the first time an eruption alert level 5 has been issued for the Sakurajima. So far, though the Sakurajima volcano was erupting, there was no much threat. Okay, the level highest level was only 3. That means people were alerted not to go near the Sakurajima volcano. But level 5 indicates that the within the radius of 3 to 4 kilometers, no human residence is allowed now. Okay, so that means the, there is a more danger of eruption okay so because of that the authorities have issued level 5 now yes this is all about the sakurajima volcano and its recent eruption but there is a one question in everyone's mind that why the Arab, why the japan will always be in news regarding the volcanoes why the volcanoes will you know erupt more and more in japan why there is a more earthquake event in the japan Okay, so we, you might have already come across regarding the housing plans of the Japanese people. They have very light material for their ho home construction. Why they are using very lighter material? Okay, this is very uh, intriguing question in all of our mind. Okay, so let us look into that aspect also. Now, before going into the Japan, let us first analyze about the Pacific Ring of Fire. Okay, what is this Pacific Ring of Fire? So, world's 75% of the total volcanoes will occur along the Pacific Ring of Fire. So, this is called as the Ring of Fire. That means it is the Ring of the Fire. The volcano will erupt the fire, okay, along with the, this lava. This is the molten magma. When the magma comes out, it looks like the fire. So, because of that, it is called as the fire. See, along this Pacific coastal areas, there is a continuous eruption of the volcanoes because of the a very high volcanic activity it is called as the ring of fire which is located along the coast of the pacific ocean okay so 40000 kilometer horseshoe shaped chain of the volcanic activity it is the this pacific ring of fire extends to 40000 kilometers okay so i will show it in the diagram just for time being you remember that it has the 40000 kilometer length okay so world's nearly 75 to 80 percent of the volcanoes will happen in this ring of fire okay it stretches from new zealand to japan in the Australian continent from New Zealand to the Japan to the Bering Strait to the uh, North America to the South America this ring of fire has been extended okay so this is the pictographic representation of the Pacific ring of fire yes so this is the continent of Australia from Australia onwards this ring of fire starts okay this is the island of New Zealand country so this is the Southeast Asia having the Indonesia, Philippines, Japan and various other countries. This is the Bering Strait. This is the Bering Sea. Okay. This is the Alaskan Peninsula of the United States. This is the North uh, America. This is the South America. Okay. It covers this Pacific Ring of Fire. That means this is the Pacific Ocean. Along the coast of the Pacific Ocean, the high amount of volcanic activity is found. Because of the high eruption of the lava, it is called as the Ring of Fire. It is located in the Pacific Ocean. That is why it is called as the Pacific Ring of Fire. Okay. So it starts from New Zealand, goes to the uh, New Guinea, Philippines, Japan, and various other countries, Okay, till the Chile. 
Chile, okay, in the South America. So this is the Pacific Ring of Fire, where 80 percent of the world's volcanoes are found. Along with the volcanoes, the earthquake activity is also very frequent in this area. Okay, so this is the Pacific Ring of Fire. So please keenly observe. Here is the Japan. This Japan is located in the Pacific Ring of Fire zone. Okay. Now come to the volcanism in Japan. Why volcanoes will happen in Japan more and more? Japan is located within the ring of fire. Yes, we have just in the previous slide we saw that Japan is located in the dangerous zone of ring of fire in the Pacific Ocean. So the country has a, as many as 111 active volcanoes. Yes, 10% of the total global active volcanoes are found in the Japan. So earthquakes occur every day in the Japan. So this is not a rare phenomenon. It is a every day very very common phenomena in the Japan to observe the volcanism. Okay, so with thousand to three thousand recorded volcanoes are there in the Japan annually. Okay, that means every day there will be ten volcanoes in the Japan. So this is not the rare phenomena. It is very common phenomena associated with the life of the people as well as the physiography of the country. Okay, so this is the frequency or this is the active volcanism in the Japan. Now, why volcanoes erupt in Japan? We have seen 10% of the global active volcanoes are found in Japan, though it is located in the Pacific Ring of Fire. But what is the reason why, what factors lead to the more and more eruption of lava? Let us analyze that. Japan lies in a zone where the Earth's crust is extremely unstable. Earth's crust is extremely unstable. That means this crust is subjected to the tectonic movements. Okay, there is a concept called as the plate tectonic. These plates having the depth of around 100 kilometers and wide varying uh, width, they are moving on the mantle. Okay, mantle has become the you know uh, force for the movement of the plates or the tectonic plates on the Earth. Okay, so. Japan is located in the Pacific Ring of Fire. This zone is the very unstable zone. Okay, so Japan is located in the unstable zone since it, it is situated where four tectonic plates meet. Yes, here the Earth's plates will meet together in the Japanese country region. There are four plates. These plates will come together and they will you know collide with each other this collusion of the plates will lead to the more and more volcanic activity in the japan okay those four plates are pacific plate philippine plate eurasian plate and the north american plate okay these are you have to remember these plates pacific plate this is the oceanic plate philippines plate again this is also a, a oceanic plate eurasian plate this is the continental plate north american plate again it is a continental plate two oceanic plates and the two continental plates these tectonic plates are meeting together in the region where the japan is located okay so this meeting of the plates will create the extremely unstable condition with respect to the stability of the region okay so japan's volcanoes are largely formed along the subduction zones okay when the two plates meet okay this is one plate this is another plate when the two plates come together they will collide with each other okay so heavier plate which has the high density which has the higher weight it will you know subside down below the another plate okay for example oceanic plates are the heavier they are the denser plates compared to the continental plates okay the continental plate will remain like this and the oceanic plates they will subside down or they will move down the the ocean, uh, continental plate okay this is called as the subduction okay the point of contact of different plates is called as the subduction zone when there is a subduction zone this zone will lead to the instability and this will lead to the formation of the volcanoes and the earthquake okay so this japan is located in the subduction zone where these four plates will meet each other okay so this is the graphical representation or the pictographic representation of the different plates. So this is the Eurasian plate. Okay, it is the continental plate. This is the North American plate. This is also a 
continental plate okay these are the two continental plates in the northern part but in the southern part this is this green color this zone is nothing but the our japan country okay so in the north of japan there are two continental plates one is eurasian plate and another one is the north american plate but south of japan there are two oceanic plates one is the pacific plate another one is the pilifine plate okay these oceanic plates and the continental plates they will collide with each other okay when they come closer with each other they will create the instability they will lead to the formation of the volcanoes okay so here the continental plate and the philippine plate are meeting this philippine plate is heavier in the weight so that is why it is subsiding down it is moving down the continental plate here one subduction zone is created so another one is the the pacific plate and the continent uh, north american plate here both of them are meeting here this oceanic plate again being the heavier or the denser plate it is moving down the north american plate again one unstable or the subduction zone is created okay so this is how the subduction zones are created this subduction zone is leading to the formation of more and more volcanoes okay so this phenomena is found all across the pacific coastal areas okay where the continental plates and the oceanic plates are meeting so this meeting or the subduction zones are formed in very uh, larger number along the coast of the pacific ocean that is why this coast is called as the the pacific ring of fire okay so again this is one more more detailed you know pictographic representation of the same phenomena where the different plates are meeting together okay here the oceanic plate is moving down this is the continental plate again this is the pacific plate moving down the north american plate this is uh, our philippine plate this is the pacific plate both are the continental plates moving down the eurasian and the north american plate okay so here this area or this picture is the japan okay so if you look into this area you will clearly understand why there are more and more volcanoes or more and more earthquake activities in the japan okay so this is the major reason the resulting volcanic arcs yes when the different plates meet near the japan country there are different arcs are created arc is nothing but the the crescent shaped or the the curved shape of the any structure okay so the various volcanoes are formed in the uh, curved uh, curved manner in the japan okay they are called as the arcs okay these are arcs that not, are nothing but the these are the arcs of volcanoes okay the ryukyu arc and the southwest honshu arc this is one of the arcs in the japan okay izu bonin and mariana arc this is one arc of the volcanoes and the third arc is the northeast honshu and kuril arc so these are the different arcs which are formed because of the tectonic movement or the subduction zone or the meeting of the different continental plates okay so again i will i would like to represent this arcs through the diagram again it will become very clear for you so there are different arcs this is the kuril arc arc is nothing but the this curved manner of the any shape here the volcanoes are happening in this curved way or the arc manner so northeast honshu arc here again one arc is there this is called as the northeast honshu arc honshu is nothing but the island okay this is hokkaido honshu shikoku and kyushu these are the four islands in the japan okay this is one arc again here ryukyu arc is there this is in this way the southernmost tip in the kyushu island there is ryukyu arc okay here southwest honshu arc again there is one more arc this is called as the southwest honshu arc kuril arc northeast honshu arc southwest honshu arc and the kuril or the sorry ryukyu arc these are the arcs of the volcanoes okay so because of this japan is highly unstable and the life of the people will become very challenging in that country so now let us go to the japan's most familiar or the most famous volcanoes okay so 90% of the country lies in the mountain tops yes this the physiography or the topography of the country is dominated by the mountains the greenery okay are related the forest systems okay coniferous forests 
90 percent of the country lies in mountain tops then the japan's highest and the most beautiful peaks are either active or dormant volcanoes see if you look into the position of japan so it is very clear that the whole japanese island or the archipelago of uh, japan is because of the the volcanism or you can say that the japan is the reason or the, it is the result of volcanic activity in the pacific ring of fire okay so being the product of the volcanism no doubt that country is dominated by the mountains okay now first the major volcano in japan is the mount fuji okay mount fuji or it is also called as the mount fuji yama this is the majestic volcano in the honshu island okay this is the second island in the uh, northern part of the japan in that honshu island this mount fuji or the fuji yama is located this is the japan's largest island okay it is the tallest peak of the japan not only the largest it is also the tallest peak in the japan and this is the tallest inactive volcano in the whole of asia so this is the dormant volcano in the recent years it is not erupted the last recorded eruption was in the year 1707 okay since last 300 years this uh, volcano is not erupted because of that it is called as the inactive or the dormant volcano this is the largest dormant volcano or the inactive volcano in the whole of asian continent okay it its elevation or altitude is the 3766 meters okay in 2013 the volcano was entered on the unesco list of the world heritage site yes this mount fujiyama is in the list of unesco's world heritage sites okay because this mount fujiyama is regarded as the you know uh, pilgrim place or it is regarded as the culturally valued place in the society of japan okay so by recognizing the cultural significance of this mount fujiyama the unesco has listed in the world list of heritage sites okay now this is the world heritage site the second major volcano in the japan is the ontake volcano okay ontake volcano this is the second highest volcano after the mount fujiyama it is just like the mount fuji it is a sacred mountain again see for the ontake volcano and to the fujiyama volcano the various pilgrims will go and they will uh, pay homage uh, in the uh, in these places okay the pilgrimage will take place they will regard these mountains as, as the sacred places okay it is the it has the height of 3067 meter okay so nino pond nino pond it is the highest elevated lake in the country which is located in this you no know, volcanic region okay on the top of the ontako volcano there is a caldera lake called as the nino pond okay this pond is the highest elevated or the uh, the pond which is located at, at the highest elevation in the japan it, this is the highest lake in the japan country okay it, this was also very recently erupted this was erupted in the year 2014 and it has caused the disasters okay nearly more than 60 people have died when the eruption took place in the year 2014 okay so this is also a active volcano in japan remember the name ontake volcano after mount fujiyama now third major and, and the most famous one is the mount aso the mount aso volcano this is a volcano with the first cable car on the top yes they have utilized these japanese people have utilized the scenic beauty of the volcano they have constructed the ropeways okay so through the rope ropeway they have you know created the communication through the cable cars okay this mount aso is the mount mountain or the volcano having the cable cars for the first time in the world okay this is the japan's largest active volcano i said the first one uh, this is the sorry this is the largest active volcano okay it is the caldera its caldera perimeter is 130 meter the caldera is nothing but the depressed part in the top of the summit okay where the water has been collected that is called as the caldera this caldera's perimeter itself is 113 130 kilometer that means it is a huge in size the elevation is 1592 meter above the mean level compared to the mount aso and sorry compared to the 
Ontake volcano and Fujiyama volcano. This Mount Aso is the smaller one. The Mount Aso ropeway, the first cable car on an active volcano. Yes, though it is an active volcano, there is a danger that at any time this volcano can erupt by you know uh, avoiding the risk by you know taking the risk the people of japan have constructed the ropeways and they have you know utilizing this scenic beauty as the economic resource to generate the money now fourth one is the sorry this is how the ropeway looks like this is the mount aso this is the caldera which has the 130 kilometer wide perimeter so this is how the ropeway or the air cars will move and the tourists or the visitor will you know look into the calder and they will take the journey here now last one or the uh, next famous one is the zao mountains so this lies in the northern honshu okay again the second you know uh, top uh, sorry second island in the northern part of the japan that is the honshu in this honshu island this zao mountains are located the very peculiar character of this uh, volcano is that this volcano region is the home to the five color pond that changes color with the changes in the sunlight yes when the sun changes his position when the when there is a changes in the variation in the intensity of the sunlight the color of this lake will also change so because of this change in the color of this lake it has you know gained a lot of tourist attractions okay it is also called as the lake of five color or the five color pond okay so this is again the most famous one after the fujiyama mount aso or mount ontake okay zao mountains so these are the four very very important volcanoes in the japan now we will we'll, uh, study about the country of japan as a whole okay in brief we'll look into where the japan is located okay so this is the japan in the southeast part of the asian continent okay this is the asian continent part of asian continent china india myanmar laos Tha thailand cambodia vietnam various other countries are there along with these philippines malaysia singapore indonesia along with this we can find the japan country here okay so this is located in the extreme east of the asian continent okay north of this japan is the russia the south of japan is the pacific ocean between china or the korean peninsula and the japan there is a sea of japan okay this is the sea of japan this is the east china sea this is the pacific ocean okay so this is russia this is china this is the korean peninsula see because japan is an island country there is no land boundary uh, there is no international land boundary with the japan okay japan only shares the maritime boundary with the china russia north korea and south korea along with the philippines okay so these are the maritime boundaries with the water bodies like the pacific ocean in the south of japan east china sea again in the south of japan this pacific ocean is sorry in the east of japan south of japan is the east china sea north of japan is the sea of japan here you can find the sea of okhotsk sorry this is the sea of okhotsk which is located in the kamchatka peninsula of the russia okay so i was referring to the four major islands of the japan okay these are the four main islands hokkaido hokkaido honshu shikoku and kyushu okay this is the hokkaido island this is the northernmost island in the japan hokkaido island the middle one and the biggest island in the japan country is the honshu island okay this is the second major island sorry second island from the north okay the third island from the north is the shikoku okay shikoku and the southernmost island is the kyushu honshu sorry hokkaido honshu shikoku and kyushu these are the four major islands in the japan but the japan as a country has more than 6800 islands okay this japan is the archipelago that means it is the group of islands within this group these are the four major islands in the japan okay remember this from 
uh, north to south okay you have to remember orderly where the honshu is located hokkaido is located okay kyushu and the shikoku okay these are the four major islands in the japan okay this is all about the the volcanism in the japan location of japan okay why there is more and more volcanism where there is uh, okay sorry where is the pacific ring of fire why the pacific ring of fire is called as the ring of fire okay what are the different plates which are meeting together in the japanese region okay so this is all about the japan and its volcanism okay thank you very much for watching this video